Coming up, pounding the beat in Washington, D.C. Rescuing lost hikers in the Scottish Highlands. And this Shiba Inu models the latest in doggy fashions. It's a pretty neat area to be down here with all the monuments. Uh, it's kind of unique. Uh, you go, you go anywhere in this country, anywhere in the United States, and you turn on the news, and they start off the headlines with "In Washington today," and that's that's where I work. It's pretty neat. Officer Marcello Muzzati and his dog Checo work the night shift. Their job is to patrol the streets of Washington. They're called in to support regular patrol officers, but only for serious felony crimes like robberies or break-ins. Checo's job is to help track and apprehend criminals. He'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. Corner them, find them, wherever, wherever they are, he'll, he'll track them down. As Checo and Marcello's shift eases from night into day, they get a call about a shooting. The suspect got out of this car, walked up to the guy at the, at the corner, and called his name out and shot him, and then took off running. Witnesses says that he ran past this car. Checo picks up the scent at the van and starts the search. has his nose to offer, and I have, what brains I have, I have that to offer. And uh, we work together as a team, so he is guiding me. So far, when we were going down the, the sidewalk, he's giving me a good idea that this is where the suspect went, and I kind of have that from witnesses, too. Although the investigators lost the suspect's trail, Checo finds a clue. And we got a jean jacket sitting on a fence. Was there any lookout involving a jean jacket? OK, copy, we're going to check it out, and then uh, we'll let you know if, there's any, if it's anything important. It, it kind of shoots your theory down that he's an, an attack dog, that, you know, he, he's attacking at will, and this is just a very mean dog, and that's how we police departments, all they have is just mean police dogs that just go out and bite people. And that's not the case. We have a job to do, and uh, part of our job is to apprehend criminals. The jean jacket is collected as evidence and will eventually lead to the arrest of the suspect, thanks to Checo. In 1997, we became centralized. In other words, we were taken out of the districts and put into a centralized location, which is Special Operations Division. And, and being an SOD has got its little prestige being in there. But being canine in SOD is, is very prestigious. It's, it's a unique unit. It's a small unit. You're, there's only uh, 31 of us there. And we have the whole city that we're responsible for. Canine Special Operations Division dogs like Checo go through a 14-week training course with an instructor. Voice only, SIT. Sit! Marcello got Checo four go, years ago go. from a Slovakian breeder. I see the dog, and I, I, I like the dog, and, he's, and so I said, well, we'll take him. And uh, he hands me a sheet of paper and a cassette tape. And I said, what's this? He says, those are all the commands in uh, Slovakian. Boy, what a good boy. But I said, you know, this isn't going to work. I said, in the heat of the moment, when things are getting crazy and you're chasing somebody and he takes the wrong turn and you get back, you're not going to remember all that stuff. You know, what am I going to do, pull a piece of paper out, you know, and give him a command? So uh, I talked to him and I talked to him in English, and he seemed to understand. And uh, we changed all the commands to English, and he picked them right up. Using a dog is considered a use of force, like drawing a weapon, and is only done under strict supervision. It requires approval from supervisors, and it's never used on juveniles. This training exercise is designed to teach the dog to search for a suspect without an officer at its side. Pretending the boxes are rooms, the officer directs the dog by pointing from one box to the next. All that obedience pays off in the end when you're doing the real stuff on the street. All right, Batman, come on out with your hands up. 
A month ago, Marcello was called in to track two men who had stolen a car, then run into the woods. Officer, how you doing? We had armed carjacking that just occurred, and we had a suspect. We lost uh, track of him over here in the woods, over to your left, west side. You do a good go out and look for him. OK. A 357 Magnum was found on the scene. Checo was called in for the track. What you got? What you got? What you got? What is it? What is that? Good boys, pick that back, man. All right, buddy, come on out of there. No, don't let that dog bite me. Come on out of there. Please don't let that dog bite me. Good boys, come on out of there. Watch your hands. Watch your hands, OK. <laughs> Thanks to Checo, the suspect was apprehended. Pounding the beat in Washington, D.C. is a challenging job, but once a year, Checo and Marcello face a different kind of challenge. It's the Iron Dog Run, an annual event for police dogs and handlers from across the country. It's a demanding but fun obstacle course. This year's event is hosted by Marcello, who also had the privilege of designing the course. He went out of his way to make it as difficult as possible. Uh, we'll start at my cruiser. Don't steal anything out of it. Uh, you will start inside the car, seat belted in, your dog will be in the back, your lead will be in the front seat with you. Are we going to win? Well, I don't know, but uh, I got a shot at the over 40 trophy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be uh, a, lot of, a lot of mud, and uh, it'll be fun for everybody. The whole intention of this thing is, is for a good time. We'll see. I, I've created this course, and we'll see how I did on it. Checo has no trouble finding the hidden suspect. They're off to a good start. Oh, Lord. The Iron Dog course is a fun course. So you want a lot of water, you want a lot of dirt. While preparing the course, Marcello made sure that mounds of dirt were flooded with water so that on race day, they'd be a mucky, slippery mess. It looks very simple. It's only maybe about six feet high, but you're going to have to crawl up there. And you know how it is when you get mud on your boots, it gets heavier and heavier. And, and I think if a couple of them slip, I mean, you're going to have them covered in mud. Good job. Uh, it was long. My God, the long. You know, I've run parts of it, not all of it, just, you know, sections of it. But the tower kicked my butt. And then uh, the mud wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. The creek, I couldn't get up over it. I thought I could get him going, get a rhythm going, but I got a car on the other side of the rope, so I couldn't get his rhythm going to get him up the creek. Paul Kakuka, Montgomery County. While Marcello may not have won, he couldn't ask for a better partner than Checo. We're not supposed to get attached to these animals. Although they're your partners, they still come home with you, they live with you, they're w at work at, with you. So you, you, these dogs basically still belong to the police department. If I was to be transferred tomorrow for one reason or another, he could be reassigned to another, to another handler. How do you explain it? You know, the thought of losing him is devastating. I just uh, don't think about it. And uh, I'm glad I have him. And I'm glad uh, we get to go to work together. Ben is a 10-year-old Border Collie. For seven years, he's been one of Scotland's top search dogs, a grade five dog. Ben's owner, Dave Warner, lives in Dumfries. 
He's a member of SARDA, the Search and Rescue Dog Association, and belongs to the South Scottish Division. Even with a grade five search dog, a uh, fully search, trained search dog who's been out in many searches, you've got to, it's like anything, you've got to continue the, the training. Training is why Dave and his wife Lynn, also a member of SARDA, have come here. Both Dave and Lynn have two dogs, one at grade five level and a young dog in training. Like all the members of SARDA, Dave and Lynn are volunteers. Every month there is a training weekend somewhere in Scotland. This time it's in the Trossachs, a highland area in southeast Scotland, the kind of place where hikers and mountain climbers could have an accident or get lost if the weather changes. The first day of the weekend is for training the more qualified dogs. Each spends up to two hours on the hillside searching for a member of the group who's pretending to be lost. In two hours, a dog and handler can cover an area of two square kilometers. OK, Ben. Come on, then. You're going to go find him. You're going to go find him. Come on, then. Come on, then. Good lad. Good boy. Search dogs like Ben don't track hey, ben. missing people on, by sniffing Come articles on. of clothing and following ben. a trail on the ground. They are air-scenting dogs. Ben. We all give off scent uh, continually. So what the dog's trying to pick up is the natural sense that we are, we're giving off all the time. So basically what we do is we use the, we use the wind to working into the wind. This is a particularly good day today. It's, it's damp, there's a bit of dampness in the air. There's a nice, there's a nice sort of breeze. That's, that's the most important part of the body, this bit here. That's his eyes, uh, it's the nose. Uh, the dog, it's, it's nose first, ears and eyes. Finding! Come on in! You'll see the dog quartering, uh, looking for the scent. It's hunting the scent all the time. And basically what you're doing is just trying to give the dog the best chance, putting it into, into the best sort of wind areas to allow uh, the dog to, to use uh, its great uh, scenting abilities. He's basically a typical Border Collie. Um, he, was, he was actually bred uh, as a hill collie, so hence he's got the sort of long sort of legs. And he works like a typical collie. He's, uh, he ranges out quite a long way. OK, one way left. You don't have to give him many commands. He really does work naturally himself. Come on, way find, finding. That Ben can work at all is quite surprising. Four years ago, while training, Ben's hind leg was bitten by an adder, a poisonous snake. The bite became badly infected. So he was taken up to uh, the School of Vet Veterinary Surgeons in Glasgow and immediately operated on. Uh, basically, at that point, he was probably only about a few hours away from, from, uh, from losing him. Um, he really was uh, in a very, very bad way. Ben's hip had to be removed. It took him a year to recover. The only sign, a slight limp when he's tired. On a day like today, could could strike. Uh, now, strike is when the dog gets gets a scent or something in uh, in, in its nose. A dog probably strike uh, probably about 500 to 600 yards away on on a good day. So it's it's quite a considerable distance. The only reward he gets is a toy. That's all. They don't get food. Um, it's just, it's just he just he just has a toy which he plays with, and that's his reward. Uh, the only time he ever gets that toy is when he's when he's found uh, when he's found somebody. He never gets toys in the house, nothing else. So basically, that's all he works for. Is just a. I can show you that. That's basically all he works for. Is that piece of that piece of string there? And maybe I shouldn't have brought that out. <laughs> what is it? Then? Oh, that's it. Yeah, good boy. That's good boy. Tom Middlemass monitors all the searches. He's the training officer in charge of SARDA for Southern Scotland. He's also responsible for organizing the training weekends. All dogs have a natural instinct to hunt. 
and that, that's what we use, that's why we utilise that in our training, is the hunting aspect. People have all sorts of opinions about how good uh, our, a dog is, but uh, it's the equivalent of about 25 human searchers in certain situations, and in other situations it can be as good as 100, especially at night, in the dark, or in really bad weather. A few months ago, the police called Tom Middlemass. Two school teachers out walking had been reported missing. Tom contacted the dog team, who were also trained in mountain rescue. They immediately left their jobs and homes and drove to the location. When a call comes, the volunteers are ready to go anywhere in Scotland. The weather was getting worse. It was getting darker and colder. Nice and easy. We're searching for about probably about uh, about an hour through and uh, you know very difficult conditions and uh, Ben disappeared into the darkness. He was working ahead of me, disappeared, uh, and came back, looked at me, and uh, then shot off again. So I thought, right, let's, let's, let's go and see what, what he's got. And uh, he'd struck from probably about 250, 300 yards, quite a long strike, and then all of a sudden, uh, out of the darkness, uh, the two ladies, two school teachers, were, were sitting on the hillside, and uh, he was sort of nestled into them. So uh, they were very glad to see uh, the dog and uh, equally glad to see myself. So uh, that, was, that was a nice one. That was, that was a very nice find. And uh, it certainly makes it, makes it all worthwhile, all the training and the hard work worthwhile when you get that, uh, that sort of result. The weekend is nearly over. Dave has time for one last search with Ben. You do have a very close bond with, uh, with your dog. Um, and I think with all the, the injuries and uh, almost losing him, I think we've, we've certainly built up probably a stronger bond. Ben will be 11 years old next year. With his leg injury starting to stiffen up, it'll soon be time for him to retire. She's going to be, going to be traumatic for both of us. Uh, and I don't want to push him, uh, I don't want to see him suffering. But having said that, it's going to be a very difficult decision uh, when I have to leave him at home and take my young dog out. But uh, I'm, I'm afraid that that's what's going to have to be done. With Ben, he certainly he is a very special dog. Uh, and I, I think you always grow a very, a very close bond with your, with your first dog in particular. Three years ago, I had had it in my previous career, and I had a dog, a wonderful little Shiba Inu, and he inspired me to want to work with him. And in the area that I live in, it's a very dog-populated area, and we needed a very special dog store. So me and Sam decided to open up the Kennel Cafe, and he comes to work with me every day. I'm not the boss, he's the boss. He's the president and the CEO. How about the bones? How are the bones doing, bud? Deborah's Vicky uses President Sam as her product tester so she can decide what to stock the shelves with. Good boy, good boy. Sam is a Shiba Inu, an ancient breed from Japan. A lot of his mannerisms and his personality traits resemble that of a cat. Shibas are known to be the most sociable dog. They are very much on their own and a little withdrawn. What about the treats? No? <laughs> when I got Sam, I was more concerned about the size of him because I live in a small apartment and his temperament for me was perfect. I then, after opening up a business with him, realized that this could be sometimes a little bit challenging. Sam's job description includes being the official toy tester. Come on. Come on. 
he doesn't seem too impressed. The moose? No. Sometimes, I don't know, he's not really given the thumbs up or the paws up to anything here. Sam's job includes modeling the latest in doggy fashions. Good boy. We have some great funky winter clothing and Sam tries them on under a little bit of duress because he doesn't feel he needs to be dressed up. So you brought me a fresh batch of biscuits this week. Uh, let's see what you got here. Chicken herb, very good. That ah, new flavor. Food been tester. Doing That's more like so it. Me big... And Sam's favorite peanut butter treat, Sammy. You got your favorite peanut butter treats here. Definitely better than testing out toys or clothes. Sam is a little feisty with customers, and he lets customers know he's here and that this is his shop and he makes the rules around here. Hey, Carrie, Hi. how are you? He's Percy been forced to contend hey, with very us? many dogs and trying to get along with them. Uh, I think in the long run, it's right working out through. very, very well. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a little dangerous. <laughs> You know, I have to admit, sometimes Sam goes through a lot working here at the store. It's quite, quite busy, and this is his territory, so sometimes he doesn't understand why all these people and all these other dogs keep coming into his space. I just couldn't think of anything better than working with my dog and being able to do this for my dog. From the day I got him, he was an inspiration in so many ways. He's taught me so many things, just from life experiences, and emotional stuff and personality stuff. And then now that he helped me change my career and gave me such a soul satisfying career, I owe a lot to this little guy. He is my best friend.